Uh, let us talk about um, a sort of interesting big confrontation that, and actually one of my favorite things in this episode, uh, besides Lady Mormont, which was Jamie uh, meeting up with the Blackfish. The Blackfish, first of all, coming back into the show after three years. And like, what a great introduction, uh, like reintroduction, re re reintroduction yeah. of him. I just loved how that entire scene yeah. played out. It was great. Uh, it was also, we should mention, Braun's first scene. Not so much, it was not an official return because... You know, unofficially, he came back uh, from Dorne and had been somewhere off camera. Yeah. But we hadn't seen him on the show until now. He was great as always, very fun. I loved when he cut off Jamie from saying <laughs> a Lannister pays his debt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wouldn't let him the catchphrase. Like, <laughs> stop with your catchphrase. Uh, but yeah, Blackfish, uh, really cool. You know, because not like the Blackfish had a ton of screen time before, but this certainly was a great way to be like, okay, this, is, this guy's pretty formidable. He is uh, not backing down very easily. And I love that the shadow of the Red Wedding hung so heavy mm -hmm. over this episode. You see it with John and Sansa's journey, and you also really see it here. And it's it's interesting, like, so much goes back to that, and, and you're reminded, you know, not only did Jaime uh, and the Lannisters support the phrase, and Tywin sent this into motion. Actually, yeah. we uh, looked up right before Joshua, who who has been mm -hmm. subbing in the past couple of weeks, our other Game of Thrones fanatic in the office. Um, he went and looked it up, and in the books, it, the, the character who, you know, does, instead of saying the Lannisters send their regards, it says Jaime Lannister yeah. sends his regards. So there's very much this idea, especially with the Blackfish, who's just sort of been holding up, that the Lannisters are very much in league with the Freys. And it's funny, like, Tywin isn't around. Everyone who sort of set this into motion, Walder's off doing whatever back at the Twins. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the people who put this into motion are now dead. Uh, so it's interesting seeing the aftermath of that. And and how do you choose? Like, we like Jamie. Yeah. We like the Blackfish. It's it, Brienne is heading in that direction. Mm -hmm. We like Brienne. Who do you choose? Who's the good guy? Yeah, I, I do like this moral quandary and this is sort of a, a more classic sort of complicated moral issue here because yeah um jamie you know has come so far since the show began as far as becoming a character way more people were rooting for and like you know hope wish good things for and now suddenly he's side by side with the phrase and yes he says sort of you know uh, sarcastic things to them it doesn't seem to like them but he's still ultimately on their side and mm -hmm. is reminding you that the Lannisters were involved in the Red Wedding, even though they weren't physically present. And so, yeah, and, and it's like because the Red Wedding was such a sort of ghastly, horrible thing that we want vengeance for, suddenly it's hard to just be like, yeah, Jamie, you get the Blackfish out of there. Yeah. You know, you take take his castle from him, you know, <laughs> just like his uh, niece was killed. <laughs> I love so much how terrible the Frey siege is. Like, yeah. I love their whole plan. They're like, we're going to kill Edmer. We're, we're really going to do it. We're going right. to kill him like we, we killed your niece. All right. It didn't work. Like, I loved how that played out. It was so good. And it, like, slightly comic, but also just feels so true to Yeah, it was he like, get on with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was great. It was funny because, you know, so they've got uh, Tobias Menzies. I'm saying his name right? Yes. Uh, for, uh, who's, you know, a lead on Outlander has come back to do this. And I thought, okay, I don't think he's dying here. But wouldn't it be funny if they went to all the trouble to bring it back and then he literally didn't speak in his two appearances and then just gets killed. I mean, Osha at least spoke, but she, she didn't yeah. have that much more. She but, had one big scene. Uh, Matt, yeah. Matt wrote that in his review of last yeah. night's episode as well, which was that, uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully you bring Tobias Menzies back to actually do something. Right. And I think he will. Yeah. Like, I think, you know, the fact that Edmure is there as a prisoner, I feel like one way or the other, Jamie will probably have a conversation with him. Uh, because now they've got this situation where they just can't get the Blackfish out of the castle. He's basically like, hey, I can stay here for two years. What are you going to do? Uh, I loved the anger on his face too. Directed, tw it seemed like it was directed toward Jamie. Yeah. When Jamie was like, "Clean him up." Like, I want to see a conversation between the two of them. Yeah. Because I think that would be really interesting. But you better believe that if uh, Edmer does die, mm -hmm. the Blackfish is gonna hit that flaming arrow to his funeral uh, yes. <laughs> pyre, that's, and he is not gonna miss. That's right. <laughs> Good callback. I, and I, you know, again, because we, we were talked about how maybe this season, in some ways, has felt like sort of. Uh, unusually predictable for Game of Thrones. And I think that's why I like this storyline a lot because I don't know how exactly it's going to play out. I mean, of course, we have theories and we can guess this might happen, but you don't know. And there's not a clean ending for it because, like, we hate the phrase, we like Jamie, yet Jamie is working with the phrase. I, and so I like that it's, you know, murky. And yeah. uh, 
we have to kind of figure out like what would be the what is there a satisfying ending uh, and I hope it's sort of a classic Game of Thrones like somewhat satisfying dramatically but maybe there's gonna have to be some loss you know? yeah and honestly I would even be because I don't think that there I think you're right there is no satisfying ending there's no way in this situation that we get everyone we care about out and if there is a way then that isn't true to Game of Thrones you right know, that's that's what hurts so much about the big losses that we've sustained Rob backed himself into a corner with the Red Wedding and paid the consequences of it. Ed did the same, you know. The Viper just didn't land the killing blow. So I could see these characters being caught in that similar net. And I love that we're building up to this big confrontation in the Riverlands. The Riverlands storyline, with which I thought the Game of Thrones was completely yeah. skipping over and looks so cool playing out. Like, it looks amazing. Um, while we're also building up to this big Bolton, Wildling, uh, John Stark army up in the north. Yeah, it's, it is interesting looking back on this episode because you kind of mentioned this at the beginning. It's like, it was great to have the Hound back, but then when you think about what really made an impact in this episode, it was like Lady Mormont, you mm -hmm. know, everyone was like, she was awesome. But then I feel like the Blackfish who, it's like, he's a character that's easy to forget if you're thinking about all the characters in Game of Thrones. I'm sure people who just casually watched the show forgot they even knew him. Mm -hmm. But then he had such a sort of strong moment here too in that whole sequence. So I don't know, it's almost like uh, these these people who are either on the periphery or we've never met. Uh, and I know that's, I know it's almost hypocritical to say because we've talked about stuff with bringing in too many characters and it's, you know, now that we're pretty late in the sh show, you don't want to start piling in and that's one problem the books did where they're like now there's 50 more people <laughs> but if you do it right and if they have just a one good scene like these two had it's like oh yeah i want to see more of those people yeah yeah and you're bringing them into storylines that again like it's it's bringing these things together in a way that are really satisfying and and it's funny because so many characters this season like think about it so many characters who we haven't seen in seasons or didn't think we'd see again or yeah. thought were dead came back in just this season and you get that sense of like, oh, the loose ends are being tied up. Yeah. It's not just, it, it's strange that it's happening all at once and it seems like every episode has something like that, but if David and Dan really only want 10 to 15 more episodes of this series, you got to start having these faces coming back into play. And I'm, I'm certainly happy to have the Blackfish back. Yeah, same here. So let us know in the comments, what do you think about this whole standoff? And who do you think ultimately will win? Who are you rooting for? If you are rooting for someone cleanly uh, <laughs> with Jamie and the Blackfish and all the other periphery characters there. Uh, that's it for this week. If you uh, want to tweet us, it is Terry underscore Schwartz, the Eric Goldman. And for plenty more on Game of Thrones and Dragons, keep it here at IGN.